Hey guys, Ian here from Mid America Prep. Thanks for tuning in and watching. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you my homemade can kitchen sink that I've been working on for the last couple of weeks to a month. Now you may be asking, why do I go off and make my own can kitchen sink where I could easily go to the store or, or go online and buy one? Well, you know, for whatever the, the store offered me, it was just really overpriced and underbuilt. Um, same thing online. I could build one for much cheaper and that would fit my needs. And so I went ahead and went to Walmart and I looked at what I could use. And went to the houseware section and sure enough I found these plastic tubs such as these right here. Uh, they're like a dollar a piece, eight quart tubs. They're great for camping and stuff. I've used them before. But what do you do with the water when you're done with it? You simply just dump it over and on the ground or in a stream or a pond or whatever you want to do. And it's, it's wasted water. You can't use it for anything else. So then I went to the camping section and I was like, what are we going to do if I can't use this? Well, then I thought, there it is right there. There's our solution. There is a vinyl fold-out sink, two-way sink, that would be great for backpacking. Uh, but I'm not backpacking. Uh, if I backpack, I would go buy one. It's $10. And so since it was $10, that's a little bit more and a little more reasonable because it's compact and, it's, and everything. But I need something that's going to be a little more durable. And so I went to Lowe's and I was like, well, wash basins. We can go and buy a wash basin and do the same concept I've been thinking of uh, without doing a bunch of construction. Well, then I got to thinking a wash basin is really, really big. And then I got to look at the prices and for $75 to $150, I can have a, a nice little wash basin. But it's kind of pointless for what my idea is here. And so I went off and did a little more constructive thinking and... And, and drawing up and I figured out what I wanted to do and I just happened to go by Tractor Supply that same day where they had dollar days going on and I picked up three of these 15 gallon totes which is, the sink sits in. Uh, I used one for my camp kitchen, uh, one for my camping gear and then this one for my camp kitchen sink. And so that's $10 for this tub. I've got a dollar per sink here so I got $12 there and then I've got um, two five gallon buckets which I rounded up for about five bucks a piece because you have the lid and the bucket and for some reason five gallon buckets are expensive unless you buy or you find them on the side of the road. But I want something fresh and clean and then I got some PVC. Um, the PVC cost me about five dollars and then I actually have to find this siphon transfer pump at uh, I think it was Lowe's or Menards for four fifty one one day. Uh, they also sell them at Walmart. Uh, that one is, what Walmart is, branded underneath the Pennzoil name. This one is just some generic one. I can't remember the name of it. But they're all the same. Um, now the other thing I was thinking is, if I've got electricity, why don't, I find, why don't I find a electric pump of some sort? So I went to Menards, and I looked around, couldn't find anything. So then I went to Harbor Freight. Guess what I found? Caught up. I found a, you know, this little sump pump or a fountain or whatever you want to call it. It would work great if I had continuous electricity. But where I'm going is kind of remote and we don't have electricity out there and I don't have solar set up. So this right here is a no-go. So I made everything done manually, uh, which is really not bad at all. So for $30, roughly plus or minus a couple cents, I've got me a camp kitchen sink that has fresh water on one side, dirty water on the other side, and I can use the dirty water to put out a campfire or use it to kind of flush our toilet or whatever we use to use for the bathroom. Um, like I said, where we're going is kind of a remote area anyways, and we had to tote in our own water. And so I was going to minimize the use of water by using this camp kitchen sink and basically getting water when we needed it and not wasting a bunch of it. Because, you know, Think of it. When you're generally going out and camp, you know, to your campsite, and you have a bunch of water jugs, you have a big, uh, big water jug that you push the button in, and you get your water and everything. You waste your water there. Or you have a water jug that has a spigot on. You turn the spigot on. You wash your hands. You know, soapy water, or whatever, and then you dry them, and you turn the spigot off. You wasted a bunch of your water just on the ground right there, and it becomes a muddy, muddy mess right underneath you.
And so with this system, everything is kind of closed and you can reuse the, the dirty water for something else later on. Uh, like I said, we have to bring our own water in anyway, so what's a little bit more water for this camp kitchen sink to wash our hands and clean our, our dishes? It really works out pretty well. And so I'll go ahead and we'll, we'll break everything down and I'll show you what we're working with. All right, guys, so I know you can't see my face, but that's no problem. What I have here is my five gallon bucket. It's full of water right now. Since we have to bring our own water in and it should be clean, I went ahead and I just have a little uh, sink strainer on top. And then over here I have a piece of PVC pipe, which my pipe from the uh, siphon pump will go into. And then over here we have our dirty water bucket. And it'll just be open and I have a lid for it also. Um, within here we've got several parts which are going to be helping us you know, use the water to here and whatever. Uh, so let me move the camera up and I'll show you what so this all is. The uh, top of the bucket you have a, your a faucet hole and then we have two buckets with holes in the bottom and then we simply just take the top off. Let me pull forward. We're going to simply take the top off and you have the bottom of the sink. Now what you got here is obviously your the bottoms of the tubs and they're at 45s and then they go to the one little drain there and then it's going to drain onto the bottom. I know it looks a little beefy. It is a little bit oversized but I want it something on the bottom that's going to help it stay sturdy and reinforced. Now the black coating there is actually plastic dip because I have everything siliconed around so it's all watertight and ready to go. And there's a little more silicone that we could probably use. I mean, I got everything where I needed it to be. Um, so it's not going to be leaking any water. And the plastic dip puts another rubber coating on it on top of the um, silicone finish. And then inside of it, we've got the drain hose, which comes out of the bottom of the sinks itself. Your faucet which goes through and screws in right there so it's a permanent fixture or semi-permanent fixture. Our drain hose which we will show you in a second. A couple of extra hoses which came with a siphon pump. They're 3 8 uh, vinyl, vinyl tubing. And then our main drain or uh, suction hose. So let me back it up just a little bit and we'll show you what all we got. All right, kids. So here's our, our fresh water hose. It's going to go into the bucket. And now we'll go into the suction part of it, which is closest to the handle, which you can see here. That will be right here. So one pull sucks in the air, or that sucks in the air, sucking up the water, and this pushes it. Suck, push, suck, push. And so we will simply insert that, twist a little bit, get it up there. This pump is held on by Kydex, um, which is the same Kydex I use for the top, and it's kind of you know sturdy right there. If I need to change this out, I can simply just unscrew it and change the pump out. Uh, you really should take these off and clean them every once in a while. And if you ever use one of these, uh, use a little bit of white lithium grease, I think it is, or something that's um, not health risking right here. Uh, mineral oil would work really good on this little pump. Okay. So since I'm throwing everything around, we have our top piece here. And we have our sink basin. Hopefully you can see this. I have that hole on top. The vinyl goes through and it's this right there. This piece of PVC which is a three quarter inch on this side and a uh, half inch side, side over here will go through and it tightens down on the back side of it. So it's not a permanent fixture, it's just like a semi-permanent I guess you could say. Alright, so there's our hose that comes through the bucket over here into the pump. And then next we have it. It's our drain. So this is going to come out of the sink, which I hope you can see this. I don't know if you will. Just like so. It goes on the bottom of the sinks, and that will come out through a hole in the bottom down here. OK, 
Okay, and then over here I have another hole by the suction or by the pump, which the hose will connect to from the sink, the faucet. Okay, so everything is ready to go, hooked up. I've got my rubber stopper for my fresh water five gallon bucket. We'll go ahead and put that in there. It's a inch and three eighths stopper, which is a little bit bigger for that than it needs to be, but that's no problem. This piece of PVC over here will be glued into that um, bucket so it does not move. It is all the way to the bottom though. Okay, now our biggest issue now is where does the water go after it's in the sink? Okay, so we have our dirty bucket here. We'll kind of move this around just a little bit. And then we've got this drain that comes out of the sinks and a little configuration down. What I have set up here is you can simply just go and take this right here and extend it with another piece of PVC with a, you know, a half inch uh, slip fit to a half inch. And I have another piece of half inch pipe which could take the water you know, directly out to somewhere else. But if you don't have that option, I've got a half inch to three quarter inch thread to a old uh, washing machine washing machine hose. Uh, the hose here is actually sealed around so it can't push and pull and leak out because this does not fit all the way in there. And then I've got uh, tape, you know, thread tape, thread lock tape in there and that will keep it from leaking there. So simply just slip that on and slip that into the bucket. So just like so, you see there's a little bit of water in there because I washed it out. We'll dump that out. So there's no standing water in there. I'm going to go ahead and we'll move you back just a little bit. Okay. Hopefully everything will work out just fine for video because this is kind of a fun little project. Now the big thing here is to make sure your drain hose comes out and has a little bit of gravity feeding into that bucket, which the bucket is right below us and we can't see it anyway, so it's not a big problem. You've got your positive water here, your fresh clean water, and then your hand pump, which is on the other side, and that will be going into the sink basins and then some, you know, eventually down to there. Now, then I've got these two stopper mats, these are for sinks or whatever, or uh, bathtubs. They work fairly good, but for some reason they don't seal completely around these holes here. Something within the sink has a little bit of a bump, and so it doesn't make a complete seal, and so it does leak just a little bit. So I'm going to get some rubber stoppers to be sticking into these holes with a little grommet or something on it, and that way you can just put it in and then pull it out and it drains the water just fine. Uh, the one thing I wanted to show is here, on the end of this here, I don't know if you can see it now, but on the end of this faucet, I've got a piece of PVC coming out of it. It all comes through here. This is just for stability. Um, but uh, the piece of PVC I was going to cut off originally, but after thinking about it for a little bit, if I wanted to get fresh water into a water bottle or something, this is going to be really great to kind of actually fit it up in there and get that fresh water to it. Um, so far, my only big issue has been um, this thing slides around a little bit. And so do I put some, uh, you know, some eye bolts on it or something? That way I can kind of strap it down to a truck bed or to a tree or something? I don't know. But I will find out something and uh, that will be on the camping video itself. And so we'll go ahead, fresh water, dirty water, excuse me, um, lunch is coming back up. We'll go ahead and see how much water it takes to get up here, or how long it takes the water to get up here. About two and a half, three, four pumps when we have fresh water coming out of there. It takes about uh, three pumps to empty a 16 ounce water bottle. So just a simple water bottle. Um, now with this dirty water, the one thing I wanted to do here yet is I'm going to put this three quarter inch piece of PVC inside this bucket. I'm going to epoxy it down. That way the hose has somewhere to lay and it doesn't pull itself out. Because you know if you pull out it prevents other stuff to happen and then it spills everywhere. It just goes everywhere. Anyways, 
So we're going to go ahead and just fill this tub up with enough water to, to show you that it does work pretty well. And with these, these big flapper stopper things, you kind of got to hold it down because we don't have enough water pressure pushing down yet. And about a third, about a third full on this sink. So we'll go over here to this sink and we'll fill it up too. Now wash your hands, this may take two people to do. Uh, you know, one to, one to pump and one to, to wash your hands. Not a big deal. And if you didn't want to put your dirty water um, or your dirty grimy hands here, you can simply just turn it around and, and go that direction. But it works this way very well. Okay, so we've got that there, and I don't know if you can hear this yet, but for some reason it does leak a little bit around those stoppers, and so it is draining a little bit of fluid here. You can kind of see it dripping out of there, but it's above gravity now. Um, one way I could stop that completely is to take the end of the hose and clamp it right here so it does not drain down past gravity, or you know the, the equal, equalization point. But that's for later on and I may still do it, I don't know. But anyways, that'll drain there. Drains pretty well. Now I'll go ahead and I'll show you the sinks themselves. I'm not going to turn the camera off to do all this. Alright, so now we're playing with the fresh water in the sinks. I mean, look here, we're, we're playing with the water in here. So, there it is. Uh, now this is cold water because it's you know fresh out of the bucket, out of the faucet. Now one thing I was thinking of doing is taking a shower bag, which I apologize for my camera operating today. These are ridiculousness. Um, this shower bag here, this is a Coleman Solar Shower um, that I picked up at Walmart for ten bucks. I really do like this product, but like this product. Um, it says here for three hours and a hundred. Three hours and 70 degree heat, this bag will get uh, a, a, the five gallons of water within it to 105 degrees, which is not that bad. Would be great for a shower or be great for washing your dishes. Um, I'll do a complete separate review on this shower bag sometime. Uh, actually out in the field, I'm gonna take a shower and I'll, I'm not gonna show you everything, but I'm gonna show you how to use it because a lot of people don't know how to use a shower without using a ton of water. I can take a shower with a gallon of water. Uh, it takes a little bit of skill and knowing what to do, but five gallons is a, a delicacy, and five gallons of water is a lot of big delicacy, not only in the middle of nowhere, but in some countries where their the fresh water is almost, you know, not there. And so once again, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll show you these sinks. I don't, know, I don't know if you can see this sink here. It's actually draining really fast, but I'll go ahead and pull that, and it's draining, if you can hear it down in the sink. Okay, now we got this one here. It drains like a little, like a regular sink would. Now it does hold a little bit of water because the um, the bottom of the sink isn't really level and it has these little lips around it. I don't know if you can see those little lips. Um, so it would have some residual water in there, but that's not a big deal. This takes a little bit of water, time to get the water out. Maybe take a couple, you know, washcloths or paper towels or whatever to soak that water up, what's left over. Um, but that's still great. It works really well, and I'm kind of happy with what it came out to be. Anyways, Ian here from Mid America Prep. Thanks for tuning in and watching. Hope you guys learned something from this. Hope you guys get out there and be a little innovative as I have today. And until next time, you guys keep calm and carry on. Be safe.